Hey, what's up guys? My name is Matt and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to pan for gold. This is just a very basic introduction video on how to pan gold and this is my way of doing it. Everyone does it their own way, but this is for those of you who've never done it before. Now before we do that, let's go over some of the basic gear that you might need or want. Now the first thing you need to pan gold is a gold pan. They have big ones, they have little ones, all different colors, shapes, styles. But if you're just starting out, I would recommend a round one. And green is a pretty good color. It lets the gold stand out. Now if you're partially or fully colorblind, you might not like the green. Um, but you can play around with different colors. And like I said, there's square ones, there's all different kinds. And once you learn the basics of panning gold, that's when you can start playing around with different pans. But I would start with the basics and go from there. Uh, now that is technically all you need to pan gold, but you might want something to put your gold into. And these little bottles here are snuffer bottles. And these will allow you to suck the gold up. It goes down the straw into the bottom. And this will hold your gold. And these are great to carry when you're out in the field. Out panning on the river. Or whatever the case may be. Now once you have it in here. You get home. You want, you want to see the gold. You want to show it off. So then they make little glass files. I don't recommend taking those out in the field. Because they're easy to lose. They're easy to drop. And then they break and your gold goes all over. So leave those at home. But that's something you can store your gold in to show it off. Now they make these little things called a jeweler's loop. They're a little magnifying glass. That way when you're finding your little tiny gold, you can use it to look at the gold. Um, it will also help you tell the difference between gold and like fool's gold and stuff as you learn more about that. Now if you're going to be panning at home in a tub of water such as this, you might want to add some jet dry dish soap. You can also add Dawn dish soap, but there's a lot of bubbles with that. But this jet dry will help the gold settle into the bottom of your gold pan faster and not float away. One other thing that might come in handy is a magnet. This one works. You just push down that plunger and that pushes the magnet to the bottom. Different styles. Uh, but that will help you get rid of what's known as black sands or magnetite. One other thing that comes in handy is a classifier. They make big ones. They make little ones. These bigger ones are nice because they will sit on top of a five gallon bucket. And you can work it back and forth. Classify a whole bucket of material that you can then pan or process in whatever way you choose. Uh, they also make ones with... All different sizes of holes this one is an eighth I like to write the size on the side with a paint marker because the stickers and everything kind of wear off this one eighth size screen is really good where I go panning for gold uh, if you're in some places like California Alaska different parts of the world that have big nuggets you might want a bigger size screen now when I'm dealing with hard rock and I'm crushing up the rock in something like a rock crusher that's here behind me, I want something with tiny, tiny holes. This one has 40 holes per inch. Um, but if you're just panning the river or whatever, you don't want something that small. That's, that's a whole different ball game. And then another thing that comes in handy is a scoop. Yes, you can buy a scoop at Walmart or dollar store, like a little garden trowel. But these ones, where it's so deep, makes it easier to dig in like the river or whatever where there's water. It will hold that water and whatever dirt you dig without it falling off and losing all the dirt that you've been digging. Now, like I said, these are things that just make it nice. Technically, you need nothing other than a gold pan. But, so now that we've gone over some of the basic equipment, let's get into gold panning. I'm my big pan here doesn't fit in the tub that I have so I'll be using this little one I think the little ones might be easier to start with anyways we have a classifier I'm gonna sit that there now I just got a little bucket of dirt here they're not much 
But I want to pull out these bigger rocks, right? Like that's not a piece of gold, I can see that. These bigger rocks can make it harder to pan as well. So we're gonna dump it in here. You can either classify dry or you can classify wet. If your material that you're working with is completely dry, like you throw it up in the air and the dust blows away, you can classify it dry. If it's damp at all, you need to stick your classifier and your gold pan under the water and get it full of water and let the water wash the rocks clean. Now even if your material is completely dry, classing, classifying it wet will always give you better results. Now that we have all these big rocks, we can look through them if you want, see if there's gold. You can also pan them at a later time. We'll set that to the side. Now we have our pan with the dirt in it. The basic principle is that gold is heavy, right? It has a density of about 19.3. So your pan in gold is gonna settle to the bottom. And then you wash away the lighter material, the less dense material, and these riffles will help you to do that. Some people like to put their pan underwater and kind of go back and forth. Some people like to do it this way. This is how I prefer it, side to side, but some people do prefer that. Whatever works for you. There's a lot of ways to pan gold, and as long as you're getting the gold, it doesn't matter how you do it, right? But I'm gonna kind of tip the pan on an angle with these riffles in the front. I don't want material. I don't want any of this dirt going over the edge here. So just work it back and forth on an angle. And that will allow the gold to settle along with any heavier material. And then I'm going to put it underwater and just go back and forth gently and wash away this material on top. Do that a couple times and then get some water in your pan. Go back and forth, swirl, swirl it around. Let that material settle to the bottom again. And you repeat the process. One thing I did forget to mention is you want to make sure all your material in the pan is wet prior to washing it over the side. So if that means you need to take your hand in there, work it around, make sure everything's wet and that there's no clumps of dry material in there. Yes, you're gonna get wet. It's nice on a hot summer day to get a little wet though. Right now it's freezing and there's snow on the ground and it's not so fun. And we're just gonna repeat the process. One thing you can also do is take another gold pan and set it in your tub and pan into a second gold pan. And then you can repan what you already did, what you washed away, to see if you lost any gold or washed any out. Another way you can practice is to get some lead fishing sinkers or cut open a shotgun shell and get some lead BBs and throw those in there because they will settle by the gold. They're heavy and they will sink to the bottom of the pan. One other thing you can do when you're learning to pan gold or if there's not gold around where you live is buy things known as pay dirt that has gold in it. Um, some of it's guaranteed to have you know so much gold. Some of it's a random amount. But I'll leave a link where you can buy some of this pay dirt along with all this other tools and equipment that I'm using. And just practice this over and over. It gets boring. And believe it or not, you can be too careful. I've seen people who are so careful because they don't want to lose any gold. And they lose a lot. They'll lose big pieces, little pieces. So just, just do it. Don't be worried about losing gold. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Now, there's not very much left here. Some people like to use the riffles and go all the way down. 
until there's not very much left. Some gold pans will actually have a little set of riffles, tiny, tiny ones that they'll use at the end. I like to use the back of the gold pan where there's no riffles, but it, it, it can be a little easier to lose gold that way. But again, we're gonna do the same process. Work it back and forth, let that gold settle to the bottom. Be very careful at this point. And you can stop at whatever point you want. You don't have to go till there's absolutely nothing. Now, there's not much in here now. So we're gonna take just a little bit of water work it side to side again if you want you can tap the, the end of the pan and then we're just going to swirl it around as we swirled it it washed away a lot of the lighter weight material some people call them blonde sands but it washed all that away and up here at the top we're left with black sand magnetite that we talked about earlier that you can remove with your magnet now I can already see gold here at the top. I don't know if you guys can as well. But as you go around and around very slowly, it'll wash all your black sands down to the bottom here. And that is it. That is how you pan gold. Now if you want to suck this up, make sure this bottle is mostly full with water. Flip it upside down, squeeze out any air. And holding it, you stick it in the pan and kind of let go with your fingers and it will suck up what's right underneath this little nozzle on the end.